Hey YouTube, what's going on? You are tuned into the Straight SRT8 YouTube channel where we discuss all things SRT8 related. Now today's video is going to be all about audio. So all your audio files out there, you're going to love what I'm about to talk about. We're going to discuss everything in terms of audio. Talking about the basics of audio, um, like frequencies, uh, talking about equalizers, talking about how to size your speakers, uh, what a tweeter is, a mid-range woofer, what a subwoofer is, how to size them, uh, actual dimensions, how to house them in enclosures, how to size your amplifiers, talking about peak power versus RMS power, get into the specifics as to how to wire them up, um, sizing alternators, talking about capacitors. If this is all new to you, don't worry about it. I cover everything in my video. This is the by far the longest and most in-depth video I've done for you guys, but it is jam-packed full of great knowledge. Um, in case you're wondering how to upgrade your Jeep sound system like I have right here, how to improve your bass, how to remove that washed out bass soon feeling that we get from the sub out back, uh, how to swap that out for a bigger one. I'm discussing how to use equalizers and bandpass filters. I mean, anything you want to discuss audio related, it's going to be covered in this video. It is a, a wholly inclusive video. Um, it does get a little bit scientific. I'm very technical, uh, but I try and break it down for you guys as best as I can. If there are any questions whatsoever, please let me know. Uh, the goal of this channel is to make it as obvious as possible and to educate you guys as a one-stop shop for everything Jeep related. Now this video is more than being Jeep related. It's kind of appeals to the larger car community, uh, but I do mention some specifics for the Jeep SRT, which also applies to other SRTs as well that have the upgraded uh, Harman Kardon um, sound package offered through uh, the OEM. So before I get into any more details, um, there is one thing I want to discuss with you guys, and that is uh, if you don't mind subscribing to my channel, I am trying to boost my subscribers. I'm trying to get uh, north of 100 right now. I think I'm at like 40-ish at the point of this video. Um, so I'm trying to, to try and boost that and um, create more revenue for this channel. The way I can put more money into what I'm doing here and get you guys better videos uh, with better equipment. Um, right now I've upgraded to a GoPro so you guys should be seeing better and improved audio quality and video quality going forward So I look pretty forward to that and there's also a ton of content on the way um, We're describing some I'm going to describe some core issues that I'm facing with the Jeep uh, One being that my carbon fiber trims starting to peel off So I'll discuss how to prevent that and how to fix it if it occurs with you and a bunch of other good content out of the way uh, This video is a little bit delayed. It's been a while since my last video update uh, But believe me, this is worth it so without further ado, let's get to it. We're gonna go to the computer I have upstairs uh, in the house and do more of a desktop view. Uh, there's a lot of things I wanted to explain. I thought about how can I best explain it and it's really best done through a desktop and sharing my screen with you guys uh, on my monitor. And then coming back in here for a final video, um, listen to some audio clips that I've, we talked about um, that we're gonna discuss in the future. But uh, anyway, let's get to it. Okay, so before we get into all the specifics about our audio. Let's start with the very core basics. Um, this video, again, as a reminder, it's going to go cover a whole lot of topics all at once, uh, going anywhere from talking about uh, sine waves, which, which is the most basic form of a frequency. Uh, we're going to discuss the low frequencies and high frequencies, uh, equalizers, and what those do to actual sound, uh, how to install a sound system, where to place everything, uh, going through various components and types of speakers get into buying speakers, um, discussing what uh, peak wattage is versus RMS wattage, the physical size of a speaker, why it actually matters. Amplifiers, uh, discussing different classes of amplifiers such as AB class or a D class. Get into how to size an amplifier, uh, how to size a wiring kit to install the amplifier. Um, going into subs now, discussing uh, different enclosure types. We're going to discuss how to install them in your Jeep, uh, what is the best way of doing that and how to install it and where to install it. And then getting into uh, frequency elimination, um, getting rid of those high frequency alternator whines and engine noises that you hear. And then finally discussing different types of filters, like uh, band pass filters, high pass filters, low pass filters. Um, so this is going to be a very comprehensive video discussing a whole range of topics, uh, going from my desktop, what you're seeing right here, uh, and then going back to the vehicle and showing you how these things actually work in practice. So it's going to be a lot of theory versus practice, and then uh, showing you guys uh, the combination of those two. However, from the very start, I want to just cover the basics on audio. Um, again, the goal here isn't to be extremely scientific. It's more of explaining how things work, why the way they work, and getting you a better understanding. That way, when you go out and buy components like speakers and audio systems, you're going to have a better idea of what you're actually purchasing and why it works the way it works. 
All right, so back to basics here. The first thing we want to discuss is the sine wave. Uh, so a sine wave follows us with a, call, a sinusoidal wave, which is why it's called a sine wave. Now you start at zero, and you get about halfway through your rotation um, at 180 degrees, and you get to your full way at 360. So this chart right here is showing two sine waves back to back. Um, this is important because assuming your sine wave ends right here, you have this lower half right here is, is negative, and this upper half right here is positive. Now you combine these two together, and you get an average value of zero, right? And they're both the exact same area under the curve here and the exact same area under the curve here, so their average is actually zero. Uh, that's why we don't actually measure power in, uh, in averages. We use something called an RMS, which I'll get to in a minute. But this here is AC wave. Um, it's not constant. If it was a DC wave, it'd be a constant power supply. This is, this is AC wave. It's, it stands for alternating current. You have your upper phase here, then your lower phase. That's important because when you have speakers, your speakers move in and out, which I'll discuss in detail a little bit later on. Uh, but your speaker actually follows this curve right here. And that's what pushes your speaker out and pushes it back in. Now the faster this wave moves, or the faster the frequency of that wave, the higher the pitch. And the slower this moves, the slower the pitch. So you move it very slowly, you're going to get some bass. You move very fast, you're going to get that high treble uh, frequency. This is important because depending on your music you're listening to, um, usually a very wide range occurs through every single song type. You have your, your very low moving sounds, which is for bass, and you have your very high moving sounds, which is like a, a thimble being hit or a, a very high pitched like electronic noise. Um, so every song incorporates the low frequencies and high frequencies and even some medium frequencies as well. Uh, that's why it's important to understand the, the core basics here of how a sound wave works. Now this one sine wave here, um, it has one frequency. Uh, I don't have a, a time here, so I can't tell you the time. But your period, which goes from here to here, it's how long it takes one sine wave to occur. So if this is one second, then you'd have one of these occurring per second. Now, frequency is measured in hertz. And hertz is how many times something happens per second. So one hertz wave means that this goes from here to here one time in one second. That's one hertz. That's an extremely deep sound. Um, subwoofers usually emit around like 60 hertz. So that happens, you get 60 of these occurring within one second. So let me show you how that sound actually is. So we go to our online generator here. I'm going to scale this back to 60 hertz. And you can hear the sounds like. This is going to be a steady 60 hertz tone. Now maybe you could hear that, maybe you couldn't. So let me boost up my subwoofer. We'll do it again. Again, 60 hertz. Okay, so that's a very deep, rumbly sound. So go back to our sine wave. Again, this is where this thing occurs 60 times in one second. That sounds like a lot, but let's play around with our tone generator. And I can actually show you the difference here. So let's go up to 127 hertz. You hear the difference there? Now I'm going to go back down and I'm going to swing this back and forth while it's playing. You can hear the tones change. Alright, so that's how your different frequencies happen in a song. Obviously, you go anywhere from way down to the very bottom of a hertz up to maybe 20,000 hertz. That's, that's what this tone generator can do. But any song is going to have all these different frequencies in there at different periods of time. And, and that's why it's very important to understand how this actually works. Now let's discuss why, why this is important. Um, depending on your certain frequencies, certain speakers are designed to handle a certain range of frequencies. Um, this is why we have very low frequencies uh, for subwoofers, and then your mid-range ones are called mid-range woofers, and then your higher frequencies are uh, meant to be handled by tweeters. So let me show you a picture here of a speaker. So this is a, a common speaker. Um, this is probably more of a subwoofer or a mid-range woofer. Um, I can tell because this is designed to handle to more and a more bass. It's a lot more rigid, more structured, and there's a huge magnet right here. Um, so these are designed to handle larger uh, forces and more energy and more bass. So this cone right here actually moves up and down. 
across this little ridge right here and this cloth cone in here. And then this magnet right here is an electromagnet, which means that as you apply power to this, these windings, you force this to either go up or you force it to go down. Because this magnet right here is a permanent magnet. And this is your electromagnet. So this goes up and this goes down. It's going to do what we discussed previously. It's going to do this. So I put them side by side here. As they reach the top of this peak, this cone right here is pushed up as high as possible. When you reach down here, your lowest peak, this gets pulled to the bottom as well as possible. So this speaker actually physically moves up and down as this sine wave passes through. The faster you move, the higher the pitch, and the slower you move, the slower the pitch. Now this brings into a few core categories. Um, if you're familiar with equalizers inside cars, you have a treble, mid-range, and bass. So let me pull that up. So here we go. So your, your lower frequencies, your bass, go from anywhere from 20 to about 200 hertz. And this is usually what a subwoofer does. Now a true subwoofer should be heading around your 20, which is usually your very low end, to about 100 hertz. As soon as you get into 200 hertz, you start hearing voices. Um, so part of your audio from your sounds and get through not just the bass portion, but more of like a a deep singer's voice would start getting through to your subwoofer. You don't want to do that because you want your subwoofer to be isolated just to bass. But then you get into your mid-range, and then of course your, your treble is your, your higher end um, frequencies. Now most cars give you a three band equalizer. You get your bass, your mid-range, and your treble. Um, some cars come with seven bands. It's still the exact same thing, but you get more adjustment here. So for example, this one has three bands per region, times three gives you nine. So you'd have each one of these little colors here would be a different equalizer if you had a nine band equalizer. Now when you're talking about professional audio systems, you can get 20 band equalizers and it gets very, very specific. Uh, but for most vehicles, you get about three. Uh, now on our phones, uh, iPhone, Android, whatever it may be, you usually get more. You get like nine bands and make it 10 bands. Um, your phone can be uh, a little bit different and allow you to be more customized for your audio. So one option you have is to play this audio through your phone into your car using Bluetooth. Uh, now that comes with a different couple of things you got to keep in mind. So this allows you to modify on your phone. So if you're going to modify this, you're actually going to end up changing the sine wave. You're going to boost the lower frequencies and you're going to bring down the higher frequencies. So I don't have a picture to show you of that, um, but when you're trying to play music, you can play it through your phone to do that. However, on your phone there's a volume knob, obviously. And the higher you have that volume knob, you're actually going to start stretching this out to be very high and very low. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll do a paint diagram. So if you have your phone over in this section, and then the rest of the section is your car, you're going to say right here, let's say that your phone is maxed out. So you have your sine wave, and you're going up and you're going back down. Right? This is your, your one full sine wave. It's not clipped. Uh, if it's clipped, it means that you're maxing out your top and you're maxing out your bottom. So a clipped wave is going to look like this. Where this is flat and this is flat. This means that you have your volume maxed out. And it should be going like this way up here, and this should be going way down here to be nice and rounded and curved, but you're hitting your, your max amongst your, your clipping your sound system. Um, this happens when you have your phone set too high. Uh, what you want to do is have your phone set to a volume that doesn't allow clipping. So you want to have your phone set where you get an normal on the wave, and then in your sound system, we draw a sound system right here, you're, you can then change the volume of your sound system to go something like this. You really maximize that sound and turn up very loud. When you boost that volume, you're not going to clip anything. You're not going to cut off your sound. If you had this set too high in your phone, right here is going to be your min and your max. And you're going to get your volume, you're going to go up, and you're going to start getting distorted noises. It's going to sound very weird and funky. And then you're going to go down to your bass and it's going to sound very funky. Um, that's distorting your sound by clipping it. So you want to make sure that your phone um, isn't set too loud. Now some cars allow you to have your phone set to a maximum volume. And when you're playing your audio in your vehicle, you can adjust it back and forth uh, by changing your volume knob, and you don't get any kind of adverse effects. Uh, some older sound systems, though, 
if your phone is set too high and you go to play the sound in your car, you're going to hear a kind of a noise when it's trying to hit real hard. And um, that means that you're clipping your sound system. So you just want to go ahead and turn your volume down on your phone, and that'll allow more of a smooth sound system sounding um, instead of having that, that weird uh, clipping sound. If you're not sure what I mean, go ahead and do what I'm talking about. Set your phone up to the maximum volume. And as long as it sounds good in your car, you're fine. Um, but again, if you sound, if you have your volume set too loud, and you go in your car, even at a small volume in the car, you're still gonna hear that clipping sound because you're you're overdriving the amplifier basically, um, and that's just causing that that weird sound. All right, so now let's get into why speaker placement matters and how speakers are different. So when you're talking about hitting very low frequencies. You want to use a subwoofer. Um, these are designed with a bigger magnet and they draw a lot more power. Um, having a bigger area here, up there, your cones, what it's called, but having a bigger cone you can hit deeper frequencies. Um, that's why they offer subwoofers in like an 8 inch subwoofer, a 10 inch, or a 12 inch, uh, or a 15 inch subwoofer. The larger your subwoofer is, the deeper you, it can hit. Now, when we go back to our, our online tone generator, let's say we may mention that. Right around here and below is bass, but in reality you want to be around 100 hertz and below. So you can your smaller subwoofers can hit all the way down to here. I mean, there's no problem hitting 20 hertz. The problem is that it gets maxed out at a very low volume. Um, so by that I mean that your subwoofer is going to pound as hard as it can, hitting that 20 hertz again. That's 20 times per second. This is going to go back and forth, but your area is so small that it can't push so much air which means that your, your volume you hear is going to be that loud. But this is a 15-inch sub. Your area right here is much, much bigger, which is going to allow your subwoofer to generate and move much more air, which means that your overall volume will be, lo will be louder um, for a larger subwoofer. And that's why you have, so like some people who have crazy sound systems actually have two or three or four or five 15-inch subs. Um, now that's going to allow you to hit the same exact tone, you just have extra space to hit it with. So extra either speakers or an extra overall area, which is going to make that bass that much louder. Um, again, the same frequency, just a louder volume. Now when it comes to your mid-range speakers, you don't need all this. Um, those aren't designed to have crazy heavy bass, right? So you go over our chart again, and if you have your mid-range set from like 100 to, well, let's see what that chart costs for. 100 up to 800 is your mid-range. So you're going to have a different speaker designed to handle that. So let's pull up a mid-range woofer. Okay, so here's a, a mid-range woofer. There's still this, this magnet. You can see this magnet right here isn't near as big as this magnet. And these right here, these are not mid-range woofers. These are actual subwoofers. Um, I change it from woofer to speaker, maybe that'll make a difference here. Yeah, these are more typical mid range. They still have a base portion because we go back to this chart. You're still pushing some base through here. You're pushing more mid range base, though. It requires less energy, less power, and you don't need to have such a wide and, uh, and large speaker. Your base, you do. Mid range, less so. And treble, even less so. So if I pop a tweeter, these are designed to handle your, your treble and higher frequencies. These are much smaller. These are usually, they're here, 0.75 inches. Now, they go up to about 2 inches or so. But your, your tweeters are much, much smaller. And again, that's because of this chart. In order to hit this frequency, you need a much smaller circle or speaker. And this one, you need a larger circle or speaker. And this one, you need the larger circle or speaker. It's because your bass requires a lot more power. Uh, that's why a lot of guys who have sound systems, they talk about buying amplifiers. When you push a lot of, let me go back to this picture of the speaker. When you push a lot of power through here, this coil takes a lot of energy to move it. And that energy is generating your, your bass. These tiny little speakers right here, I mean, they're only an inch wide in comparison. This is maybe 15 inches. This is a very, very small coil. And that's what this is right here. It's the electromagnetic coil. It's a very, very small coil. It takes a very small amount of power. The larger your coil, the more power you need. That's why guys, again, with, who have those subwoofers um, have different alternators and um, different uh, amplifiers that pump out more power. Now, speaking about power, I know I'm kind of bouncing around here, but believe me, there's a, a method to my madness. 
Now we get into speaker ratings. So let's go ahead and pull up a, a speaker. So let's use Sonic Electronics. Let me maximize this. And let's go look at an actual speaker. Let's look at a symbol first sold by them. So we'll go here. Subs. Again, here are the options. Let's go for a 12 inch just for kicks. Okay, this may be hard to see, but there are different ratings here for an Alpine subwoofer. You have a 750 watt max and a 250 watt RMS. So what's that mean? Let's go back to our chart. Again, back to your sine wave. When you talk about RMS power, we discussed previously how this lower half right here and this upper half averages to zero. And that's true. However, there's still power inside this wave. There's power right here and power right here. The averages may be zero, but the true power of the wave is not zero. Um, so we came up with a way of measuring this called RMS. It's root mean square. And that's allowed you to capture the area under the curve for both the upper portion and lower portion. Uh, you multiply by square root of 2, it gives you your RMS power. But, point being that there's still power in here. And so when they refer to RMS power, they refer to normal operating power. So back under this Alpine speaker, it says it can handle 250 watts RMS. Now, a watt is a way of measuring uh, power. It's the output of power. And power can be derived multiple different ways, using Ohm's law. Um, Voltage times current, V times I equals power, uh, I squared R equals power. There's a variety of ways of calculating power. But this tells you right here that this subwoofer is going to operate constantly at 250 watts RMS, which means that under normal conditions, it's going to last forever under 250 watts RMS. However, if you want to crank the volume really, really loud for a little bit, it can handle 750 watts as an absolute maximum. It cannot handle this much all the time. You'll blow the speaker out. And you'll blow it up because, again, let's go back to this picture right here. This is designed to handle, for this speaker, 250 watts. Keeps you inside this area. If you hit your 750 watts, you go to the very extreme top and the very extreme bottom of this cone. That's going to clip. That's going to peg out against right here. So in other words, go back to my, my horrible paint diagram. This is normal sound. That's your 250 watts. If you bump it to 750, you get something like this. It's not maxed out. But if you go beyond 750, it goes up and gets it's flat right here. It's supposed to be flat. And then it goes back down and gets flat right here and over. So you're, you're clipping it right there. And this is where the speaker can physically, it can't move any further up. And it can't move any further down. It's physically maxed out. So right here, it bottoms out right here. That's where this lower portion is. And for this top right here, it bombs out right up here. That's its upper portion is. Your physically cannot move any further. And this is where you get distortion. So they're telling you, if you want a lot of power, this guy can handle 250 watts, normal, up to 750 maximum, but anything beyond that, you're going to blow your speaker apart. This is why talking about um, the resistance and the power of a speaker actually matters. Now, I mentioned resistance. What is resistance? So when you're trying to move this sine wave, it's going to take some power to move a speaker, right? So that's where this coil is right here. And it takes power in to move this down and to move it up. The more winds you have right here, the more wire, the more resistance. The more resistance, the more power it takes to move something. Now you may think, well, you know, why does that matter? Well, again, because part of your formula for power uh, in incorporates resistance. Um, so P is in power equals I squared uh, current times tur current times resistance. So your higher resistance is, the less power you're going to be uh, for your throughput. So let's look at this diagram again. And right here we have a 4 ohm car speaker. Now you may say, well, I see online there's 1 ohms, there's 2 ohms, there's 4 ohms, uh, there's 8 and there's 16 ohm. If it's true that it takes, that the higher the ohms, the more power it takes, why would someone buy a 16 ohm resistor? I mean, a 16 ohm speaker. 
So let's go back to this. So we think about um, pushing easy power through here. Uh, let's think about this being a spring. And let's say you are pushing on this with your hand and you're pushing down. If this spring right here that holds it in place is extremely weak, a small push of your finger is going to send this guy bottoming out and oscillating back and forth. It's very weak. However, if it's extremely strong, you got to push really hard to get the speaker down here and it's going to come right back. That's how audio is. When you have a 1 ohm resistance speaker, you push a little bit of power into it and it slams this guy down and up and down, up and down, up and down. But it's not crisp. You're going to have very washed out bass sound. It's going to be loud, it's going to be obnoxious, but it won't be very crisp and clear. If you have a higher resistance right here, it takes more power to move it, but it also is more controlled. You're going to get the exact frequency you want. So for example, if we have, let me go to a generator. If our goal is to hit 133, 131 hertz, if we have an 8 ohm resistor, an 8 ohm uh, speaker, we may go like this, right around this area, right around 130 ohm, or 130 uh, hertz. If you have a 1 ohm and you're trying to hit, say, 32, it's going to be like this. You're going to be all over the place. It's never going to hit it exactly. And that's because you have such a little resistance, it's going to overshoot and undershoot. So again, back to my amazing diagram here. If you have a, let's say your goal is right here, and your goal is right here. If you have your 8 ohm, you're going to come up, you're going to touch it, go back down, and touch it. Pretend that touches. That's going to be your 8 ohm. If you got your 1 ohm, you could overshoot, or you could undershoot. You're not going to hit it perfectly, because your goal with a 1 ohm speaker isn't to have crisp, clear sound. Your goal with a 1 ohm speaker is to just have volume. You just want to have crazy loud bass that shakes your car apart. You don't care if it's perfect bass or not. You just want to hear a loud bass. That's what that gets you. So hopefully you guys are still with me here. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is how to size different things. Um, so we kind of talked about speaker size. We talked about uh, why you need a, a, smart, a bigger speaker uh, for subs and a smaller one for mid-range and for your tweeter. And um, actually, I forgot to mention placement. Now subwoofers, back to this chart again, your extremely low bass right here, you can't really tell where it's coming from. Um, and that's why when you have a sound system in like your car or you have a sound system at your house for your TV, your subwoofer can be anywhere. It doesn't need to point towards you. If you put it behind you or next to you, you can't tell. Uh, you, just, you hear the bass, you know it's there, but you can't tell where it's really coming from. However, when you get into your upper basses, mid-range, and your treble, you can hear where that's coming from. They're directional speakers, which is why you need to have your TV speakers facing towards you. Um, think about it this way. If you have your TV speakers facing towards you, and you have it at one volume, and you turn around facing the other direction, it's a lot quieter because they're directional speakers. They are facing away from you, um, in which case it actually matters where you place your, your treble, meaning your tweeters, your mid-range woofers or speakers, and then your subwoofers here. Your sub can go anywhere, which is why oftentimes it's in the back of a car in the trunk. You can still hear it in the front of the car. You can't, in the back of the trunk it's louder back there, but it's not directional. You can't tell where it's coming from. These speakers, though, are always facing the driver or facing the person in the vehicle. Your mid-range whippers are down by your feet at the bottom of the door, and your tweeters are up towards the top usually in your A-pillars. They're right in front of your face, facing right at you. These are a little bit lower, and of course this is in the trunk. So placement actually matters. It's very important for these. Now, when you buy speakers, you can buy something called a component system. Now, component systems have a mid-range and a tweeter together. So let me pull up a component system. Uh, yeah. All right. Perfect. Let's pull up. Uh, this works. Okay, so here's a component speaker system. You have your right here, your mid-range woofer, a mid-range speaker, and here's your tweeter. Now, what is this? Well, as we discussed before, you want to only have your bass for your sub. 
You want to have this handle your mid-range, and you want this for your treble. So how do you separate these? That's where your equalizer comes into play. So for your system right here, this is your, your equalizer. It says, I'm only going to send high frequencies right here and mid frequencies right here, and I'm going to completely ignore your very, very deep frequencies. Those are going to the sub. So it completely blocks all of those. Now, this is also important because it allows you to, to um, increase the volume for, um, let's see, so volume is measured in dB, is decibels. This allows you to change your decibel value for your different speakers. So let's say you're, this is uh, down in the bottom portion of the door, and this is right next to you, but say it's further away from your face. And you turn your radio on, and you can hear your bass when you're subwoofer, before, you can hear the mid-range bass right here, but you can't really hear the voices that well. If that's the case, you can go in here and you can bump up your decibels just to the speaker. It's the same thing as changing your volume, but only for one speaker at a time. Which is why when you buy a brand new sound system, they go through and they configure these for you. That way you hear your mid-ranges properly, you hear your uh, bass properly, and you hear your subs properly. This has to be adjusted, that way you're having the proper audio sound in your vehicle. Now, when you go out and buy a new sound system, this you got to do yourself. So say you want to replace the sound system in your vehicle right now, you can go ahead and there's tons of options out there for different resistance, uh, different ohms, different power, uh, RMS and, and peak power, the whole shebang. It's very dependent on your uh, personal opinion, and usually you get what you pay for. You pay for something more expensive, you get a higher end product, you get more customization like that. If you were to install this yourself, you want to go ahead and configure this as to how you'd like this on the, to be in your vehicle. Um, there are ways of doing it. Um, if you have a microphone and special software, it tells you how to boost it to make sure you're getting the proper frequencies at the proper magnitudes. Uh, but for most installers, they just do it based on their own sound from their own hearing. All right, you guys still with me? Going through a whole lot of information all at once, trying to jam-pack this video full of good stuff. That way you guys know how to buy speakers. So as a recap, we discussed sine waves. We discussed frequencies, uh, hertz, again. Uh, we also discussed how speakers work. Uh, we talked about different equalizers for treble, mid-range, and bass. Uh, we talked about clipping by having your volume set too loud on your phone, which causes distortion. We talked about mid-range woofers, subwoofers, and tweeters. We also got into resistance, Ohm's law, peak wattage versus RMS wattage, component systems, and so on and so forth. We're about halfway done so far. Next thing I want to touch on are amplifiers. So let's say you want to go with this speaker. And this one, let's see the overview. Here you go, frequency response from 60 to 22,000 hertz. And here we go. Your RMS power, 6 to 100 watts. And here you go, different, your tweeter level setting. This is again, this is your dB, your decibels. You can boost or you can subtract different frequencies for your decibels. And you have a two-way external crossover. We talked about that as well. This is all very important information. Again, uh, you want to focus on what we discussed for your size, your resistance, and your wattage. Let's say you know what you're going to buy. Let's pretend for a minute that we're only buying this one system. And we only need 6 to 100 watts RMS. Well, there are options for buying amplifiers. So let's go online and look up amp amplifiers and see what we can find. If I can type. Okay. There are different types. There are different classes of amplifiers. There are usually an A, B class, and there is a D class. D class is more about bass. It's actually only for bass. They are designed only to work for subwoofers. Uh, they are not super great at processing audio in a very crisp manner. Uh, and then in a very efficient manner, like they would for an AB amplifier, their just goal is to pump out a ton of bass. Here we go, 1,000 watt maximum power. These are just designed for subwoofers. If you want one for your component system, like we discussed previously, you're going to want an AB amplifier. Now, what if you want both? What if you want to power your speakers and your sub at the same time? Well, they have those too. Usually those are called five channel amplifiers. There we go. And here we go. A Rockford Fosgate 5 channel amplifier. 
yeah, 50 watts RMS uh, by four, which means four channels or your four speakers at four ohms each. And you got a sub that can be 350 watts RMS at either one or two ohms. So your amp kind of tells you what it can and can't handle. Um, so usually your first thing you want to do in building a sound system is figuring out how much power do I need? I mean, how much, how loud do I want it to be? Now keep in mind that most of your power goes towards bass. So how important is bass to you? Do you want a very loud thundering bass? Or do you want more of a, a bass that hits hard but not crazy hard? Um, that depends on uh, how much power you want to put to it. So you want to start by sizing your, your subs. And then you want to say, okay, I want a sub that has, say, 500 watts. Then you want to find an amp for it. Now, typically, you would not buy a five-channel amp uh, if you're a serious audio person. You want to have a dedicated D-class amp for your sub and a dedicated AB-class amp for your component system or for your mid-range woofers or tweeters. Now, as an important note, you don't need to buy a component system. Uh, let's see if I can get a picture. Some speakers, or actually most speakers, come with a two-in-one. Uh, they have a mid-range woofer and tweeter together inside each other. A component system is a level above that, in which you can isolate them and separate them. Uh, but uh, the cheaper sound systems uh, have a, a tweeter and a mid-range woofer together. Uh, so if you go to your car today and you look for your speaker, you may only have one slot in each door, and that's going to be your mid-range slash tweeter area. Uh, you may not have tweeters, which are those smaller speakers. They may not be in your A-pillars. You may only have the one sat down below. Now, as cars get more expensive, the audio gets better and better. And now there's, and more often than not, there's going to be a mid-range and uh, a tweeter in there. So you have component systems throughout the car, uh, especially when you get into like the Jeep SRTs where they have the 19 different speakers. And that has a ton of tweeters and mid-range speakers and also a woofer in the car as well. Um, it's become more and more prevalent where you have that option. But when you go to buy an aftermarket, you don't have to buy that if you don't want to. But the reason you want to get two different amps is because your Class D amp is, again, designed just for bass. And then your AB channel is designed for your other frequencies. And so usually you'd have one dedicated for one and one dedicated for the other. Keep them completely independent. The way in case one blows, you can easily change it out. The other option here is that most of these come with um, the ability to adjust gain. And, and gain is a way of, of adjusting your decibels. So let me see if I can get a better picture here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. It's not a great picture. Um, but right here, there is the ability to usually adjust your crossover frequencies and your gain. And then this is a remote switch for gain. This is always for your sub. Anytime you get a remote bass knob, this is just for your subwoofer. Your other adjustments have to be made on your amplifier itself right here. I'll get showing. So having just one amplifier means that you can adjust your bass and your other speakers together at once. But if you want crazy loud bass, you may max this out and minimize this one. Um, versus if you had separate amplifiers, you can adjust them both independently and get better control over it. Um, I did buy a five channel once for my car way back when. And um, it worked. It worked great. But I wish I had two different amplifiers for the vehicle and the way I could control the bass a little bit better. Because I had to turn down the speakers quite a bit in order to maximize the bass for it, which kind of annoyed me. I wanted to have these louder, um, but if I made them louder, the bass got washed out, and I couldn't hear it as crisp and loud as I wanted to. But anyway, I uh, got a personal preference on that. So you know what kind of speakers you want, and you know what kind of amplifier you want, now you got to buy a wiring kit. That's your next step in, in the challenge here. So how do you size wire? Well, wire comes in sizes called uh, AWGs, or gauge. So I have a, where do I have it? Nope. Um, let me see. Oh. Well, one of these was supposed to discuss, there we go. So here is how you figure out what size wire you actually need. So let's say you got a thousand watt amplifier. You want to take your total, and then depending on again, if you got a class D or a class AV, take your total RMS power, ours would be a thousand, divided by 0.75 is your efficiency, divided by 13.8. So you may say, why is this 13.8? Um, my car is a 12 volt system. All cars are 12 volt systems. 
well, your battery is 12 volts, I should say. In order to charge 12 volts, you need more than that supplied to it. Your alternator supplies around 14 volts. This helps charge your battery to 12 volts, usually or actually around 13 volts uh, or 14 volts. And so you want to divide by the actual voltage. Again, power equals um, voltage times current or actually let's, let's pull up that up right now. Power fund is. All right, all these different variations of Ohm's law. Uh, but power equals um, voltage squared divided by resistance. Um, I mean, there's all different ways of, of determining this stuff. It's, it's all Ohm's law. In this case, your E is your voltage. So we go back to this chart. It tells you to divide your total wattage, 1,000, by 0.75. Let's pull this up. We have 1,000 watts. Divide by 0.75, that's your efficiency. It says that your system is going to be 75% efficient. And then we're going to divide this by, and the reason this is higher is because your, your amplifier is telling you it's going to output 1,000 watts. In order to output 1,000 with your efficiency being 75%, you got to lose 25% of that power. So it's saying that, let's assume that you're losing 25%, so you're actually taking in 1.25 times as much power as you're putting out. That's why we get this. So we do 1,000 times 1.25. 1250 or around these 1300 before. And then divide it again by 13.8. That's your voltage. And there you go. 100 amps. That's a lot of power. That's 100 amps at your 13.8 volts. So you go over here. And we're looking at to draw right about here, 85 to 105. And now it says, how long is your cable going to be? That, that depends too. So your, your power cable goes from your battery right to your amplifier. And so you got to measure how far it, your car is going to be. Usually they're like right around here, 16 to 19 feet. Um, you got to go from your battery, you got to route it through the firewall, down through the door trim, back to amplifier and hook it all up. So you gotta measure that out. But usually it's around, say, uh, 16 feet. If your car's a little bit smaller, if you ride it a little bit better, maybe it's down to 13 feet. Uh, but regardless, you wanna buy the proper size wire. So for us, we're looking to write about a four gauge wire. And that's gonna cover you anywhere from 10 feet up to a 22 foot distance. Now, you could oversize this and you can go up to this area and also again it covers a four gauge for most of it too so you'd be perfectly fine. There is going to be some overlap here because there are safety standards involved and um, get the guarantee that you're not going to get the wire too hot. If you try and undersize your wire, say you wanted to put in like a, a 10 gauge and you draw too much power through it, your wire actually starts to get extremely hot um, and then it starts to burn a hole through the jacket which is this rubber portion of the wire and then it starts fire. Um, so it's very important not to undersize this wire. Can you oversize it? Yeah, you can oversize it. You can use a one. Is it going to hurt anything? No, it's not. It's just way more expensive. Uh, this wire gets pretty expensive the larger gauge you go. So you want to go online to buy a wiring kit. Look something like this from Sonic Electronics. You have your power wire right here and your grounding wire. So your grounding wire is a lot shorter because any part of your frame of your vehicle can be grounded against. Uh, so your power has to come from your battery, go way back to your amplifier. Once you're at your amp, you can go to any par portion of the ground, uh, any portion of your frame um, that's grounded. If it's painted over, you scrape away the paint, and now you have a, a true ground right there. There's no need to go back to your battery. Any part of the vehicle that has bare metal is considered a ground. That's why it's much shorter. This right here is for your speaker wiring, and this is for your subwoofer wiring as well. And this is for your remote base switch. Um, there's a little knob that runs from your amplifier up that most ba base knob that we discussed on uh, the last picture that I already lost. Right here. All right. So now we discussed how to size your amplifier, how to size your subwoofer based on uh, physical size, and then uh, power size, how to buy the proper wiring kit. Um, as a, a note, I always buy wiring kits. Because when you add all these components up, it gets pretty expensive. 
Um, so my best bet is always to just buy the proper wiring kit. You make it too much wire, it's not a big deal. Um, you don't need to buy it down to the exact inch you're going to use. More is always better. You can always trim it away. Now we get into enclosures. So your speaker enclosures for your mid-range and your tweeters, they go inside your door and they go in your A-pillars. What about your subs? Where do your subs go? Well, if you've noticed, there's always a giant enclosure for subs. And that's because subs need air to be able to move back and forth. So let's look up subwoofer enclosures. You're going to have two options, either a ported slash vented option or a sealed option. So a ported slash vented option is something like this. It's where the air gets trapped inside here. Your subwoofer moves back and forth, pushes air out through this hole and out through this hole. That's a vented or ported area. It allows the air to vent outside. These are louder. You're always going to get more volume out of a vented enclosure because that sound wave inside of here is not getting pushed out towards you. However, for more of a precise audio sound, if you're an audiophile, you're going to want a sealed enclosure. So let's check them out. So here we can see there is no port for the air to come in and out of. It's completely sealed up, which is why they're called a, a sealed enclosure. Every vehicle I've ever seen that has a stock sound system uses a sealed enclosure because sealed enclosures have better sound quality. You're usually not trying to get crazy bass out of them. Usually for a stock sound system, they want to have good bass that sounds crisp and clean and hits hard, but isn't obnoxious. And that's why they always use sealed enclosures. Now, it depends on personal preference. If you're trying to go for that loud, obnoxious sound, you may want a subwoofer with a 1 ohm resistance, and you may want to go for a vented enclosure. Um, that way you can get as much sound as possible. Now, when also choosing a subwoofer enclosure, you want to read on your subwoofer how much space it needs. So let me see if I can go back to that subwoofer. Where did I have that? They always tell you how much space they need. So these already come pre-built. You got the enclosure pre-built with it. And this is a great option if you're trying to put your sound system inside your trunk. Um, say you're not going for a factory look. You're not trying to hide it inside the car. You want to have your whole trunk dedicated to subspace. This is a great option. Come to the speaker. It comes wired. Right here it tells you with 2 ohms. And it comes enclosed with, with a ported uh, vent right here. You can just drop this in your car and you're done. You, you wire in your amplifier and you're good to go. Um, if you're going more for a factory look, you need to remove your stock enclosure and replace it. Now for the Jeeps, actually before I get too far ahead of myself, let me pull up subwoofers. The sub, again, the sub will tell you how much space it wants. go. Here we go. Are you going for a ported or vented enclosure? If so, you need 1.125 cubic feet. If you're going for a sealed enclosure, you need 0.65. So depending on what sub you buy, you need a different enclosure for it. Now for the Jeeps, there is a company in Jacksonville, Florida that designs custom enclosures for us. They are called uh, Audio Design and Custom Graphics in Jacksonville, Florida. That's Audio Design and Custom Graphics. This company makes you custom machined boxes for us that are designed to replace the stock enclosure we get with a subwoofer. So let me pull up a picture. Uh, in case you guys don't know, Cherokee SRTA is an awesome form. I use it all the time. But we go under here. Let's go under our full form listing. WK2 audio. Where are you?
I swear I'll have it in one second. Well, I used to have the link pulled up. I don't know what happened to it. Um, but anyway, if you go under uh, Jerry SRT8, uh, you can go ahead there and there's a link or one of the guys talks about uh, audio designs and custom graphics. It shows you a picture of how the actual sound system looks or how the actual enclosure looks. It's designed to replace your existing one. So our existing one's made out of plastic. Um, you can't get the sub out of the box. They're, they come as one whole assembly. So if you want better bass, which I think everyone does, then you need to replace your stock enclosure uh, with an aftermarket one. And this place is the best place to go. Um, there's tons of reviews on Cherokee SRT8 about it. They have great reviews. Um, the enclosures are, are custom built for us and they're extremely strong. And uh, you can either have them buy the sub for you or you can have the, just the box the box bought and you can choose your own sub and install the sub yourself and wire it all up. One huge con of our sound system is that the subwoofers, in my opinion, are horrible. Um, the bass is too washed out. Now, that happens because they're passing the wrong frequency to the sub. So, back to this chart, I want to hear right down here. 100 and below is what I want to hear personally for a subwoofer. Ours, however, gets higher mid-range bass and upper bass is where they call it right here. The upper bass gives you more of a, a washy sense. Instead of your bass being focused on hard-hitting, crisp bass, it ends up incorporating your upper bass here, and then it doesn't sound as crisp and as hard. And um, your upper bass is meant to be handled, in my opinion, more by your mid-range woofer, not by your subwoofer, which is why I'm not a huge fan of the way they sound. It sounds very washed out. So in a perfect world, I'd be replacing that subwoofer enclosure with one from Auto Design and Custom Graphics. And I'd swap it out for a better sub and a better amp, and I do an install video for you guys on how to do it. However, I'm not sure if I get to that point yet or not. I'm still debating whether I want to do it or not. Uh, right now, I turn the bass down in my car, and I use my phone's equalizer to pump up the very low bass and to drop down the mid-range bass, and it works pretty well for me. So I may not swap out that amplifier and that sub yet, um, or I may. I I'm not sure. If I do, though, I'm going to keep the stock amplifier for the mid-range and for the tweeter speakers, and then I'll just buy a new Class D amplifier only for the subwoofer and put in that new enclosure. Okay. Now let's talk about if you want a crazy loud sound system, how can you make your car handle it? Well, if you want a crazy loud sub, a much bigger than this one, uh, you need, again, a bigger amplifier, and you're going to need a bigger wiring kit, and a bigger enclosure, and bigger everything. However, it's going to get to a point where your car can't handle that. And that's because your car alternator only produces so much power. Your alternator is designed to produce enough power to power your vehicle. It's not designed to power a 6,000 watt subwoofer. So if you want to have a crazy loud sound system, you need to buy a new, uh, a new, uh, well, a new alternator for your vehicle. Um, so some options out there are stock ones. You can go through OEM and they sell higher output alternators. Um, some ones you got to go online and buy it and have someone install it for you. Now your alternator obviously goes under your engine bay and gets driven by your belt to produce current. That powers your battery and then that's also going to provide power to your sound system. So you want to go ahead and upsize your alternator if you have a crazy loud sound system. You can go online and Google your alternator you have in your vehicle right now. Figure out how much power it makes. And then again, use that Ohm's Law and figure out how much power your new sub's going to draw and see if there's extra space in there or extra capacity in your alternator to cover the extra demand or not. There may not be, or there may be. Um, you got to do a little bit of research there. Once you do that, um, bass also hits very hard and very fast. So say you want a very big subwoofer again, say 6,000 watts, be extreme here, and you're going to go from having your sound be quiet to a massive punch of bass. It takes a ton of power. Um, and that power comes from your alternator and from your car's battery. So let's say that within a microsecond you got bass firing. Well, your alternator produce, produces a steady flow of current. So your alternator gets maxed out instantly. Now your, your sub says, hey, I need more power, steal from somewhere else. The only other place you have power stored is your battery in your car. So now all of a sudden you're pulling an insane amount of power from that battery instantaneously. And batteries do not like that. And you do that again, and again, and again, and again. And so eventually you're going to destroy your car battery. 
Uh, that's why they have capacitors. Uh, capacitors allow for a very quick discharge of power out here in your car. So let's go back to our, our awesome charts here. And let's say that your alternator on this chart produces current right here. That's your alternator. It doesn't fluctuate much at all. Now let's say your demand goes from nothing and then boom and back down. Well this power up to this point is supplied by your alternator but from here up this has to come from somewhere. It comes from your car battery. If you buy a capacitor they come from the capacitor instead. The capacitor does something like this. If your chart it's going to charge up and hold that power. And I have all this extra power being right here in reserve for your capacitor. And they can discharge immediately like this. That's what they're designed to do. You get rid of this line. They can discharge immediately and there's not a problem with it. So if you have a hard hitting base, again, let's erase this, and you have this in line, you can have your, pretend this is your, your power right here, and then we'll do in yellow is your base. Your base can be firing, uh, let's see, right here, like this. Not a big deal. Your capacitor has enough power to cover this mad, massive demand. So your alternator, which will draw in red, can produce your steady power. And your capacitor will just discharge and then recharge accordingly. So let's go back to your black. We have right here, it's going to pull this down and discharge your capacitor. And it's going to charge back up for the next spike. And so it would be perfectly safe here to use a, a large uh, capacitor. Now I understand this is a, a very horrible demonstration of how they actually work. But just trust me, capacitors work great. You can size them too. I won't get into how to size capacitors and everything like that. But they're measured in farads. Um, you can do a one or two farad capacitor. They're very large. And probably 12 or so inches long. And about 4 inches wide. Um, but capacitors are a great option here for immediate demand and for satisfying the power requirements for your vehicle. Okay, so that's basically the whole video uh, in a Snapchat. So, let's go back to this guy real quick. Let me show you the, how the sound actually sounds for frequencies. So we discussed your bass, but let me slide this all the way up so you guys can actually hear the full range of frequency. Pretty cool, huh? So that whole range goes from your subs up to like here, to your mid-range, up to your your tweeters. And this is what every audio sound is. It's this range that your human ear can your human ear can hear. Um, so the video again covered how to size an amplifier, uh, how to buy it, where to buy it from, uh, how to size wiring different components for speaker sound systems, uh, watt power versus RMS power versus, I mean, uh, wattage for RMS versus peak, discuss mid-range woofers and tweeters, different classes of amplifiers, uh, different channels. Uh, again, as a reminder for a channel, a one channel amplifier is usually for a sub, has one input or one output, and then for a, a, a four channel would be four actual speakers powered by it, uh, or a five channel is usually four speakers plus your one sub. We talked about enclosures, uh, ported versus vented, which are the same thing versus sealed, um, how to size wires, and then how to buy that custom enclosure for the Jeeps. Now, uh, the very last thing I want to discuss with you um, is going back into the vehicle and playing with this equalizer, um, playing the same song, but changing the equalizer in the vehicle. So, we're going to adjust your bass, mid range, and treble, and I'm going to show you how to maximize and optimize the audio quality in your vehicle using your three brand equalizer. So, let's get to it. All right, so now we're getting to the portion of the video where we're actually going to listen to music, and I'm going to change it on the fly. Uh, so I'm listening to a song by George Quintero. It's called 300 Violin Orchestra. It's available on Spotify. Uh, I do not own the rights to this song, so please do not sue me. Uh, the whole point of this video is just to let you guys get a, video, uh, a feel for the audio differences when you're playing with equalizers. So the equalizers don't actually change frequencies. They just change the decibel value of that frequency. So we're either going to boost the DBA value or reduce it. Um, so for our, our options, we have mid-range, bass, and treble, which are the three options that come on the stock equalizer for the vehicle. 
So I did turn the equalizers off on my phone. It is just a straight pass through. And then right now the car is set to um, a zero boost and a zero reduction as well, the way it's all nominal. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this song and play a portion of it uh, uninterrupted. And we're gonna get a feel for the regular song and how it's, uh, it plays out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start adjusting the bass, mid range and treble on the fly. You're gonna be able to hear all the impacts, the quality of the sound. And then we're gonna go ahead finally and fine tune everything. But for right now, let's just listen to how this song sounds without any changes. Now I'm going to rewind it a couple seconds and we're going to play back and start modifying our bass. Rewind it again, and now we're only going to modify our mid range. Okay, and finally we're going to play around with treble. All right, so what are your thoughts there? Uh, in my opinion, when we have the treble up too high, it sounds kind of like you're underwater. Um, I mean, sorry, when the treble is too low, it sounds like you're underwater. And when it's set too high, it sounds very like cheap, almost like you're using a, a poor quality speaker. You can't get the rich sounds of the, of the speaker out. For mid-range, when it's set too high, it sounds, again, very cheap sounding, uh, in my opinion. But when it's too, when it's set too low, that sounds unnatural as well. Um, so whenever you're trying to tune your sound system, you want to start with your mid-range and treble. Uh, don't touch your bass. The goal here is to adjust the sound quality where you want it before you start playing around with that thundering bass. Um, so in my opinion, I like a improved treble, a decreased uh, mid-range, and then the bass is always subjective. If it's, if it's for hot um, hip-hop music, I'm probably going to turn the bass a little bit down because in my opinion, bass in the car is washed out. Um, I prefer to have better settings down here for bass, uh, which is why I use uh, the ones inside the phone instead. And I bump up the very low frequencies, like 60 hertz, and I bump down anything like um, about 100 or 200 hertz. That way the subwoofer is only hitting like 100 and below. That to me is, is preferable. The guns it's all very subjective. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and tune mine to where I want it to be. And then go ahead and play this song again. I'll let you guys hear it with these new settings. There we go. As, these are kind of my preferred settings. Um, sorry for the camera bump there. Uh, I did kind of mess around with them. That way you couldn't just hear just my settings. You got to hear a chance of me doing a very drastic, immediate 
maximum treble, minimum treble, max bass, or uh, max mid range and mid uh, mid range as well. Kind of gives you a feel for how to set your equalizer inside your car. Um, again, in my opinion, these are the best settings for what we have um, for more of a general sound, uh, whether it's a, a hip hop or it's instrumental or it's classical. Uh, anything like this, having minimally boosted bass is, is great in my opinion. And then again, go ahead in your phone and adjust your, your bass that way it's not as washed out as it does in the vehicle um, with these current settings. Um, so that being said, if you guys got any questions, uh, definitely hit me up on YouTube and drop some comments in my videos. Um, I'm going to go ahead and in my descriptions below, I'll put some more information and kind of recap what we talked about today. Uh, if there are any ideas or suggestions for future content, again, please let me know. If you guys like these kind of videos, again, let me know. And if not, if you got uh, a way for me to improve going